guys welcome back hope you're doing very well today we're going to do, be doing something a little bit different we're going to be showing you my setup of airbrushing and also taking a look at um, cleaning out the guns for beginners and stuff like that but I'm going to keep this very very basic I don't want to confuse anyone but um, yeah we're going to be having a look at the compressors what type of compressor you should be looking at after you get sick of using rattle cans. I mean, we all start off by using, when we do models, we all start off by using uh, rattle cans or spray cans, whatever you want to call them. After a while, you kind of get sick of paying $22, $24 for a rattle can. So if you're doing a model, you'd be looking at um, probably five to six rattle cans that you'd be buying for a particular model. And basically there is your air compressor money and you yeah you soon get sick of um, having these I mean I had a lot of these um, heaps of probably about 40 of them in a drawer and I was thinking to myself uh, Gary what are you doing you're wasting money with rattle cans when you could be buying an air compressor and saving a lot a lot of um, a lot of money in the long run and also with spraying airbrushing you are in more better control with what you are doing than uh, with rattle cans rattle cans you can easily over spray and get a lot of runs and you don't want that in your car model or motorbike model whatever you're doing but and another thing Air compressors are good for is if you're into your um, World War II planes or any sort of planes you can do your panel lining very easy you can do your shading with um, airbrushing stuff like that but like I said we're going to keep this very very basic I'm going to show you a basic um, gun first how to clean that out in what I've picked up in the long run uh, just show you guys for whoever's out there that's thinking about getting an air compressor and gun and show you what to look out for with the air compressor in particularly not so much a gun um, basic gun you could probably start off with about the um, $70 mark and you can go upwards from there because you know, you've got different guns that do all different types of um, spraying with all the bells and whistles on it but we're not going to get into that today because that would be far too confusing and I do recommend that you with an air compressor that you spend about or save it up just um, spend about 180 to about 220 on a um, air compressor you don't want to be buying a, um, a very, very cheap air compressor because I guarantee you it won't last long. It's not as good as if you were to buy about a $200 mark air compressor. So, and we'll get into some sort of like few um, things on um, trouble that you could run into uh, during air brushing with sort of like different types of paint. We're going to start off with the basic Tamir paint first and then we're going to sort of like get into sort of like some paints where you don't need thinners at all. So but without further ado let's get to the bench and let's look at a basic airbrush uh, a gun first. So yeah hope you enjoy going to enjoy this video so let's get to the bench and let's get to it. Okay guys, now we're at the bench here. This is just a couple of airbrush guns that I do have. As you can see, a bit of the difference here. As you can see, this one is a bit, is a bit more advanced gun. This one here is what we're gonna be having a look at as a basic gun. So what we'll do there is we'll move this one away as you can see the different features on this gun to this gun so what we'll do is we'll we'll move this one away because we want to try and keep this as basic as possible now when you buy your gun this is basically a basic um, 
gun that you could probably get. Now this one I brought, I, I live in Australia here, so this one I particularly brought from um, Super Cheap and also, um, oh, what's it, uh, Autobahn. You can buy these guns from Super Cheap or Autobahn or you can go into a model shop and buy a gun, but it's going to be a bit more pricier than um, than this $70 mark one. So uh, this one's just a basic one. Now, when you receive it, you um, say, for instance, if you want to be spraying cars, I always use a needle of 0 0.03 needle, a uh, point. 0 free needle in an, in the gun here so this is what this um, gun has got so basically let's just say for instance we've got it all dirty and we need to uh, clean this guy out now what a lot of people uh, probably don't realize is that most people pull the needle out mm. that way that is a bad idea because, like I say, what we're going to do is, I'll show you the reason why it's a bad idea. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull this gun apart. So we're unscrewing this. All right. Move that out. We're un unscrewing this to release our needle. Then what we're doing is we're unscrewing this. Taking that right off. Then what you should have received in your gun kit is one of these. So we're gonna be unscrewing the tip of this. I'm doing it with my opposite hand here. So, so uh, we're unscrewing that, taking that off. And you wanna be careful that um, now the needle's exposed a little bit. You don't want to be interfering with it, as in bending it, because it can be very, very easily. I'll go this way, then I'll turn it back the other way. It can be so very, very easily. I need to unscrew it more. So undoing it, that. Now be careful. You've got this little um, rubber washer that's on the end of it. Be careful of that. Don't lose that. So we're just going to put that to the side there. So I'll turn it back over here. Now this is what I mean by people will pull. We'll unscrew that fully. Take that right off. People pull this the wrong way out by pulling this. Because what it's going to do is, like I've already sprayed with this needle. So... What's going to happen is, if I do that, I'm actually, in the channel here, I'm actually scraping off all the paint and leaving it in the channel here. So what I do is, is just push the needle forward through the front of the gun, grab, and out like that. That's the more better way of doing this, and... We're having a look at the needle here, and there's not much. Um, I do keep my needles pretty clean. There's not much um, paint, dried up paint on this at all. But if there was, and I pulled that out the wrong way, you'd have um, you'd have dried up paint in your in your channel here. So when you go to put a f clean needle back in through that way you're also going to be pushing that dried up paint on the tip of your needle and then it's going to end up at the front of your um, uh, gun and you're going to have a, a bad result of it may, when you fire it up, may splatter. So what we'll do is, this is all pretty much clean this needle anyway, but we'll go through a bit of a demonstration here. Grab your um, thinners. So what I'm doing is squeezing my finners on here on a cloth, just squeezing it on there. Then what we're going to be doing is grabbing our needle, 
Then what we're going to be doing is, from the back of the needle, not the front of the needle, we're going to be wiping the needle. I just don't want to make sure I'll be losing that little bit there. So what we're going to be doing is, we're going to be back of the needle, with the thinners on there, and go forward, like that. Turn the needle around, forward like that. You don't want to be starting from the tip of your needle and going down like that because you'll guarantee you're going to bend this needle. So it's always backwards and up. Turn, up. Turn, up. A couple of times. And there, you'll have your clean needle. Then it, all it is, is just a matter of grabbing your gun again careful and be careful of this guy here this guy your trigger make sure that's down make sure that it's not lifting out because it may not be in right and you'll have got to um, reset this um, the trigger again so what we're going to do is put this through this here then we're going to push it through just not, not all the way, not all the way, because what we're going to do now is, I'm going to flip to the side here, well, I'm going to leave that, actually, and we're going to get to the next bit here, okay, now, if you've got a very, very old needle, dip it in your thinners, and just clean it out that way, for that so and also with this this here grab a you know you may have an old needle uh from a gun and just dip it in the thinners and and clean that out just really really clean that out as i can see that straight through that anyway that looks nice and clean i always keep my guns nice and clean so that is what you do there now what we can do is Grab our gun again, and I'll turn it this way. We're going to be screwing this on, back on, like so. Now, the reason why I haven't put the needle all the way through is because I need to get that bit back on first, and I don't want the tip of the needle po poking out through here where I could damage it. So we grab our little tool give this a tighten back up just like so and we're good to go then we'll grab our front and screw that back on so that's what we're doing there turn that around now i can push this needle safely through and we are all in with the needle Put this back on, screw that up, and now that needle is nice and secure. Okay, then what we're going to do is put this back on, screw, screw that back up, and basically we are done. We've got a nice clean needle. That is how I have, this is how I've been shown and been taught on how to clean your gun out properly so that is that now what we're going to do is i'll put that cap back on now what we're going to do is we know we've got a nice clean gun now we're going to go to the air compressor and show you the air compressor okay now we're over at the spray booth and our um our air compressors what we're taking a look at first is our spray booth here as you can see this is the wrong way to have it at all um as you can see the filter is very dirty that's a that's a no-no it gets clogged up straight away it's no good for your health ventilation so i'm going to be changing that because that is disgusting and with this spray booth it's basically very simple it um we have a just a, a light that is at the back here you can get spray booths that have a light at the back along 
the sides. Much more better than this one I got here. I will be soon getting rid of this one. Um, I do need to update it. So um, yeah, I'll be getting rid of that one. And the bad thing about with this one too is when you want to turn it on, you've got to go at the back. The switch is at the back, which is yeah, not a good idea. Um, so basically, that bit that is it on the spray booth. You want to you want to keep your spray booth very clean. Um, but we'll go to the air compressor first, and we'll probably show you uh, we'll probably show you this one actually. Um, because this one's basically set up for basic airbrushing. Um, we'll go through a few things with that, and then we'll come back to the um, to the booth here and show you how I have a cleaner setup and what I do in a stage with the booth itself. So let's get to the. Um, I'll bring you closer to the airbrush uh, sorry the compressor and yeah we'll go from there okay guys um, as we can see now my other compressor is identical to this one so I'll try and flip this around here so we get a more better look at it okay what should you be looking for in your first air compressor number one is like I said before spend that little bit more um, money because I guarantee you if you're going to be um, getting a um, how can I say it a very 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 basic um, air compressor you're going to find that you're going to probably would have trouble what's going on here why is it doing this why am I you know all, all bad con controls so basically what you want to be doing here is this one cost about 180 to 200 dollars very very good now you want one that's going to have your regulator which is your regulator there so you can manage and um, adjust the PSI so um, that's that there. Now, I have, when I spray, I spray my cars at between 18 PSI to about 22 PSI, depending on what, um, where it be a Tamir paint, where it be um, a Mr. Hobby paint, um, stuff like that. So that is in, that's the reason why I say 18 to 22 PSI. So that's why I have that set up for cars. Now, what you want to make sure too is when you first set up your compressor you and what i mean by it between 18 and psi 2 is is set your psi when you have your compressor on and your gun in and you're pressing the trigger back lift up this while, while it's all going then turn your your um, knob here to the required 18 to 22 psi you, because you just don't want to um, set this 18 to 22 psi while the air compressor is not on because you'll get the incorrect psi on what you want to spray it at. So that's my recommendation there. Um, spray it, yeah. Turn the gun on, spray, set it, and then you should be good. Second of all, once you finish spraying stuff like that, you go to clean your gun like I was showing you before, and for an instance, um, you want to be uh, using your gun in the next hour or so. Okay, so I'm going to show you that now. Now the um, compressor may be a little bit um, noisy, as we're doing this but um, I just want to show you a demonstration of how to clean the gun out if you're going to be using it in about an hour's time something like that so I'll get it set up and we'll come back okay guys now what I've got here is probably about half of the cap of, of thinners there 
other thing is there. So I've got that in. Now, if I wanted to use my, my air compressor in the next hour, all I'm doing is say I want to clean this up now. So what I do is I grab my cloth here and basically I'm giving this at the moment a bubble bath in a way. So I've got my cloth over the front of the gun. So as you can hear that and see that in there, that is giving it not only cleaning here as well, it's also getting rid of the gunk, mixing up the gunk inside the start of the trigger. So therefore, once I've done that, like that, it should be good. And then what I'm going to do is spray this out now. Just spray it out onto the cloth. Not a good idea to be spraying this out on your um, uh, on your pad here in the air booth. Or you've got one of these guys here where you can plug it in there and just spray your thinners into there. As you can hear. The compressor is starting up again. Just like so. Just like that. Then we've got a clean... I'll just wait for this to stop. Okay. Then you have got ready to go within an hour. If you're finished at the end of the day, it's the same procedure as, or a couple of days, you know, you're not using your compressor for the next couple of days, then you go through the procedure of cleaning out the whole gun. That's what I do to keep it nice and clean. So, now, I'll explain that bit. Now we go to, so like, okay, we're finished with our, our gun for the end of the day. Oop. Drop that. Put that back on there. Now, if you've been spraying for a long time, too, see this here? This is, catches our condensation. The condensation builds up in the tank. You must get rid of the condensation at the end of the day um, spraying, because if you don't, number one is, you're gonna wreck an air compressor, because it's gonna just rust on the inside, and, uh, you're going to have problems spraying with all that water build up in the tank. So what you do do is, now, what I do is, you'll see there's a screw underneath here, release valve, if you'd like. You need to unscrew that while the air compressor is on. Because what it will do is, it'll blow out all that water. So that's what you do there. So what I'll do is, I'll give you a demonstration. I've got to make sure I've got to hold it properly. So I'm gonna, it's gonna make a bit of a noise. Leave it running for about 30 seconds. Turn off your air compressor, put your release screw back in underneath. Tighten that up. And that is that. Now this guy here, sometimes you've got a release valve here to release all the water out. I don't use this at all. I actually unscrew it, like so. And as you can see, there's a bit of water in there. If I shake that around, you can see that bit of water in there. Tip that out into the bin because you don't want, even though you've hit this release valve here, you're still going to end up with a bit of water at the bottom and you don't want it to start rusting on the inside. You've got a filter here. Every now and then, give that a clean out as well that just um twists and comes out and then 
twist it back in. So clean that filter out every once in a while. It does depend on how often you use your compressor. So that is um, that is that. So then what we do is we tighten this back up. Sometimes it can be a bit of a problem. I think I've got it. Don't over tighten it because just a snug tight. tight. Um, and that is how you maintain your compressor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get into a little bit of spraying. So I'll, I'll, I'll set up for a little bit of spraying and we'll be right back because I need to clean this out. I don't want to be showing you a dirty um, booth. Okay guys, we're back now. As you can see, I have a perfectly clean booth. So nice clean one here. So for our demonstration, now you see the reason why I've got um, a paper towel here. Uh, that's because whenever I am spraying a car, and this is from my good friend from Paul from ProScale who mentioned this, that um, whenever you spray in a car, you're doing the body of your car and you're spraying in the booth and sometimes you may get that mist of spray going around. Put some paper towel down, spray it with some water. What the water does when you're when you're spraying is when you're spraying a car, the mist will automatically catch, go down onto the paper towel and just stay to the sticky because it's sprayed with water. So that's a tip, just a tip, but it's a, a very good tip from my friend Paul from ProScale. So I do this all the time now. Now, what we're going to do is to say, for instance, we are, we'll just put that there because we're going to use that. Um, say, for instance, we are using Tamir. We're going to be sticking with Tamir at the moment. So, so that's your basic Tamir. Um, now the ratio to mix your Tamir paints is one part uh, paint to three part thinners. So by all means for a beginner go and yeah get the te test tubes um, like here, not test tubes, the um, these here and you can measure it if you'd like um i don't do that anymore because i've done enough i know the judgment by now so i just um go i put the mix straight into my bottle my cap here i put the thinners in first and then the paint and then i just mix it up um because i know what it should look like um it should look milky in a way, if I can explain it that way. And because if you don't have the right consistency and you have your paint way too thick at this, so like you're spraying, 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 uh, eventually it's, you're gonna hear that, uh, so like, I don't know, a spitting type of sound. That means your paint is too thick and eventually it's gonna clog up and stop. Another uh, problem too, is if you um, will get into the spraying, but another problem too is if you're pulling your trigger down and back and um, it's going to be probably hard to explain it, but you need to release your trigger in the correct way. If you don't release it in the correct way, you're going to end up with a clog up of paint at the start here because you haven't exit all the paint out properly. So what we'll do is I'll turn the um, this on and it's going to sound a little bit noisy, but I'll try and talk up as much as possible. Now, as you can see, we've got our fan on, so we're going to get starting ready to spray. So we'll just spray it like that. 
Now, what I mean is, if you're going to have you're having a problem, don't do this all the time. Don't spray and then take your finger off the trigger, right? Do not pull back. Do not take your finger off the trigger straight away. You need to release the trigger in the proper way. So when you're spraying, you're pull, pushing the trigger back. So you're getting all the paint that's out as well as and just leaving the air to come out if I can explain it that way because if you if you do this constantly you're going to have a build up of paint here and it's going to splatter onto your your car that you're doing or whatever whatever you're going to be doing so that's going to be an issue uh, and that could be another problem the reason why you could have an issue with it clogging up stopping what's going on here as well too so basically uh, say for instance you know we're doing a car here okay I'm going to open the, this up a little bit more so we've got a good so basically what you're doing is I might turn this around actually we'll start with a clean sheet okay so you want to start at the bottom of the car, right? Starting off like that. And then going across. Slowly building up. Like that. That way you get, and hopefully you can see that, or we'll bring that forward. Hopefully you get a good even consistency. No, hopefully you should get a good even paint going along. You don't want to be doing, like I do here, you don't want to be doing this and then come up like that. What's going to happen there is, right there, see how you get, you're going to end up with different shades when you come over your spray for a second, third, fourth coat. You're going to get too much of an inconsistency. So, that's, that's what I do in that way. Now, what else? what else? So basically, you know, this is a good way to um, practice on. I want to try and get this over more here to this side. So yeah, that's probably better, as you can see. So basically, I'm going spraying, slowly going up, and, pu and pushing my trigger back in the position so I'm not getting that spray like so now um, so that could be another reason why and I'm doing this for a friend of mine this video for a friend of mine who's having a little bit of difficulty we all have difficulty when we um, are starting off using an airbrush so I'm helping a friend out here as well so um, so that's basically the two things that you could be having trouble with and you know who I'm talking about here um, they could be the two things that you're having trouble with or I'm afraid because maybe that you see how I'm, I'm spraying I might shift this back over you see how I'm spraying and you don't hear the air compressor that's because this is a good air compressor what I'm hearing from your air compressor, and I'm afraid this could be another bad thing too, is that uh, it could be, uh, how can I put it? Um, it could be a trouble air compressor, as in um, you, it shouldn't be, every time you're pulling the trigger back, you shouldn't be, uh, hearing the air compressor come on constantly all the time that to me is a telltale sign that it is a um, very very uh, basic air compressor too basic I think it's going to give you trouble in the long run if I can um, say that but um, I'm hoping that um, I'll turn this off now so Basically, I'm hoping that these tips, or anybody out there that's been a beginner here, 
hopefully that these tips help in a way. But um, basically, that's that's it. Uh, with all the tips and stuff that I've shown you, it's pretty basic. But yeah. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. And um, let me know, comments down below, if it's actually helped you in a way. Because I'd be very um, appreciated, humbled that I've um, helped you in a basic way. Uh, we may get on to sort of like a bit later on. Uh, well, actually, before we before we go, I'll put this here. Before we go. So, basically, you're starting off with everybody buys Tamir paints at the start. Uh, after they're done with rattle cans. And then you can sort of like, after Tamir, you can venture out into sort of like, oh, I don't want to be mixing thinners into, a, um, into the gun anymore or something like that. Then you can sort of like venture out into sort of like buying um, paints. I'm only using a few as an example. Um, SMS paints, which don't require thinners at all for airbrushing. Um, then, what's another one? Uh, trying to think of the other one, but there's, I only mentioned probably three. Um, SMS uh um, what's the um, outlaw paints is another one. I have not used outlaw paints, but that is another one. But I use uh, pro scale paints. These are the ones that I do use for. Um, these require no thinners at all. Just put them straight into the gun, and so that's the that's the brand I use. Um, but there are others out there that you can sort of like use. But, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that, guys, and because I don't want to confuse it any more than I hope I haven't confused it. And, yeah, that's, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. But, like I said, please leave comments down below if it's actually helped you in a way. I'd be very much appreciated. Until then, guys, see you later.